Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm talking about using the Line 6 Helix Floor for vocals. Now lately I've been doing a lot of live streaming. I started off by doing interviews and my computer gets very noisy when the fan comes on and I figured that I needed a noise gate. Now the Helix has a great noise gate for the guitar and the Helix Floor has a mic input, it's an XLR input and a great mic preamp, which is actually the same mic preamp that the M20D mixer uses. It's very, very good. So I was using that with the condenser mic and the noise gate to stop noise when I did interviews. It sounds really good. In fact, I'm actually talking right now through the Helix straight into my computer. And if I turn the noise gate off, you'll hear the effect it has. If you're listening with headphones, you'll hear there's like a hiss in the background. And now I turn it on and all the hiss is gone. It's a really, really great noise gate. In fact, I think I like it more than the one in the M20D, it's fantastic. So for talking, this is great. I've also got some other effects as well, which I'll talk you through. And of course, the reason I'm talking about this today is I've been doing live streaming lately with singing. My Voice Live 3 wasn't working well, and I had some new patches on my Helix. So I thought, why not use the mic through the Helix? And watching the broadcast back, I think it sounds really good in my opinion. I'm really, really happy. This is a great vocal processor. So here's what I'm using. I think it's very important to have a good mic and obviously the mic has to suit your voice. I have quite a low voice and the mic I'm using is a dynamic mic. It's a Sennheiser E935. I love this mic, very good quality, sounds great, reliable. I'm using a Megami XLR cable, great cables, lifetime guarantee really good quality. I think that's important to have the right mic for your voice and a good cable. Now I'm plugging this into the back of the Helix Floor into the XLR input. Again, the Floor is the only one with this. I wish the other pedals had a dedicated mic in because as a singer, this is really great. But I'm glad it's on the Helix Floor and that's the reason why I tell people to get the Helix Floor if they're a singer. If you look at the input block here, I've selected mic. Obviously you need to select mic and not guitar or it's not gonna work. Also, if you go to global settings, you will see that there's a mic trim that's set at zero. You need to turn it up. Now it's been great with 2.9 because before that you would turn it up and have to listen for distortion. You don't need to do that anymore. If you look at the input block on the pedal itself, not on the editor, it will flash green when there's input. So talk into the mic and turn it up, it will flash green. Sing at the loudest you're gonna sing at during a gig. Remembering that obviously during a gig you might get excited and sing even louder. Set it so it goes red and then back it off. Mine's around 24 dB. You do want to set that at the right volume. So if I sing loud at my loudest, that will not go red. So it's not going to distort. As you can hear, it's not distorting. It's really cool. There's also a low cut. I'm not using that. I'll use it on the EQ block. And there's also an option for phantom power if you're using a condenser mic for recording or for recording acoustic guitar or instruments. Or if you just like to use a condenser mic, there's a phantom power option. Really, really awesome. So I'm using a dynamic mic. I've got the noise gate on, it sounds great. Let me show you the path I have here. The first block I have is a compressor. I think it's very important to make those soft notes louder and the loud notes softer so my voice isn't all over the place in volume. What I've done is I've set it so that when it's on, it's the same volume as off. You can hear it's much weaker with it off, much fuller with it on. Again, use the blocks on the Helix floor. Look at the floor on the compressor itself. It shows you what's happening with the compressor you can see with your eyes that the compressor is engaging and how much. I've left it pretty much in stock and I've just put it at 75% to blend some original signal back again. I think it sounds really good, I'm happy with that. But play around with that, I like the LA Studio Comp. Some people use the preamp, there's a preamp in here for a microphone, there is a Studio 2 Pre, that's pretty cool, it's got a phase option on there so you can just play with the phase. I don't really like you know, the sound of it. I don't feel like I need it. I feel like this sounds great already. So I'm not using it, but it's there if you want to play with it. I think EQ is the most important thing. And again, let me turn the EQ off so you can hear. This sounds very muddy. I could never sing with a mic like this. This is the mic straight in. I need to get rid of that low end mud. So what I'm going to do, like with my guitar, I'm going to take the low cut. And if you look here, bring the low cut all the way up. In fact, if you bring it all the way up, it sounds a bit like a telephone voice. Look, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I like that around, well, 150. I mean, again, I've got quite a low voice, so I want to cut that low end mud out. Rather than boost the treble, cut the low end out first. And then I do want some high end sparkle because it's like this otherwise. So I'll bring that up until I get enough, but not so much that I'll get noise. And I think that's great. I could go through the parametric EQ and do some more tweaking. 
Take some lows out, take some low mids out. But I think right now that sounds really good and clear. That's my basic vocal sound. But obviously when I sing, I want reverb. So I do love the plate reverb. I'm gonna add a plate reverb here. And I can have it on one path. If I'm running out of paths, I'll just have one path. And if I turn that on, there it is right there. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. That's quite a lot. I'll bring the mix down. There we go. Yeah, 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 one, two. That's nice. And there's a delay which can be assigned to the tap tempo on the floor, so it syncs with the guitar delay as well. Very nice. Echo, 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 echo. Great effects for the voice. Now, I'm not going to sing today. If you want to hear me sing, please do subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell and watch my live stream concerts at the weekends. You can request a song and hear me singing through this. I think it sounds really cool, personally. So... That's awesome. There's some other things we can do though. Don't forget all the effects you use on the guitar, you can use on your voice as well. So that's cool. If you want chorus, if you want distortion, if you want to try wah wah, they all work on the voice. You can really play around with them. I'll just show you one thing. In the studio, when you record, it's nice to have the reverb and delay on a separate path. So you get that straight through sound at the top and the effects blended at the bottom. What I would do is I would go to say the reverb, turn the mix to 100. Just like in the studio, you turn it on, obviously there'll be way too much reverb like this. That's way too much, like I'm in a bathroom. So then you use the B level to bring that down. The A level is the level of the top line and the B level is the bottom line where the effects are. So you use that to control the amount of effects instead. And that means you get a parallel effect routing, which is really nice. That's what you would use in a studio. The way before was serial. And you can do the same with the delay as well. That's really cool, it sounds very nice and it, and it cuts through nicely. One thing I stole from the TC Helicon pedal is you just notice I turned the reverb off and it's easier to hear my voice. With the reverb on and you're talking to the crowd, thank you for listening, it gets a bit kind of muddy and hard to hear. It's better with it off. On the TC Helicon pedals, when you turn the reverb off, you actually get a boost in volume as well and some more presence on the EQ. Now you could use something like a snapshot to do this. It could turn the reverb off, turn the volume up and change the EQ to make it even brighter. So when you're talking, it's really present. But I found something really cool that I just stumbled across in my live stream. It won't work with this setup. If I have one path like this, it will work. So what I actually do to recreate that effect of boosting the volume when I'm talking and turn the reverb off, I actually turn the reverb down by 4 dB when it's off. So when I'm talking, this is my volume. I'll have the sound engineer set the volume. So when I'm talking, testing, testing, one, two, three, this is as loud as they can get it without it feeding back. Now, when I sing, obviously, I'm going to be projecting and I'll be singing louder than I talk. So when I sing and turn the reverb on to sing, the level will come down by 4 dB. So I actually reduce the level of everything. So that means I can talk like this very clearly. Everyone can hear me. And when I turn it on to sing like this, now it's dropped in volume. And obviously I'm gonna sing loud and then I'm gonna talk softer like this. So it's a really, really cool thing. And you can assign that to a foot switch. So when you're not singing and you're talking, you press the button. Our next song is called Lots of Reverb. Lots of reverb. And if you get it right, they should be about the same level. So it's really, really cool. Uh, I think that's great. And things like that can add so much shine to your performance. Because if you talk and it's covered in reverb and delay, it sounds like you're at a karaoke bar or something. And this just adds that extra level of professionalism and basically means that people can hear what you're saying, which is, really, which is always a good thing, I think. Well, most of the time. So that's really cool. And don't forget, we've got the looper. The looper also works on the voice. And if you bring it to the start of the path, and then record your voice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now if you play with testing, the blocks, testing, one, two, you'll three. You'll hear that reflected. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, That's two, three. That's what I started with. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Test and that's what I have now. So that's a great way to check your sound and dial in your tones without having to sing and talk and just hear it back like the audience will. That's really cool. I would then bring that to the end once I'm done and use that to record something. So that's a pretty quick overview of this and I'm sending it out obviously through the XLR to front of house. I think this is great. I hope, I really hope Line 6 add more to this. My dream if they're watching is that they can add the TC Helicon harmonies that are driven by a guitar signal. 
That would be absolutely amazing. That would be the only thing I'm missing from this as a full-on vocal processor. Yes, I can add a TC pedal into the Helix effects loop to do that, but if they could add that into this, this thing would be one of the best vocal processors on the market. Seriously, it's, it's amazing. The effects are top quality. The routing is awesome. You can use USB paths and things. This is so amazing. If they can add vocal effects, I would be so happy. I really hope that they consider doing that at some point. But even without that, this is an incredibly powerful vocal processor. Again, I forgot to show you earlier. I've also got the noise gate on. This is with everything turned off right now. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And this is with everything turned on. Completely different experience, right? It's really, really awesome. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna have more videos on this in the future. This is just the beginning. And also I'm gonna have a new series on using apps with your Helix and USB devices as well. So please do consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, ring that notification bell so you get notified when I go live and when I post a new video. I really appreciate it. And until next time, Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.